In this video, you will learn about an American boy from Splendora, Texas, who on his eighth birthday in 1998 was tied to a tree, doused with gasoline, and set on fire. He suffered third-degree burns over 99 of his body and underwent 150 operations before dying. At the age of eight, American Robbie Middleton was tied to a tree, doused with patrol, and set on fire. The boy suffered third-degree burns, and 99% of his body was burned in a 1998 incident in Splendora, Texas. Thirteen years later, Robbie died of skin cancer caused by severe burns. A few weeks before his 21st birthday, the boy recorded a video message pointing out his abuser before his death. Watch the video to the end for his interview. Robbie Middleton was a mischievous seven-year-old boy who loved to run around the living room, ride his bike, and play basketball with his friends. More than anything, the boy loved his birthday party. Every year, his parents threw him a big party because he looked forward to it. Two weeks before his long-awaited eighth birthday, Robbie was happily shopping with his mother and sister, and when the June sun of 1998 was warming outside, little Robbie was walking home from his walk. The family lived in Splendora, Texas, about 40 miles northeast of Houston. There was a beautiful woodland park near the house where local children often played. After playing with his friends, Robbie went home to get something to eat. It was daytime, warm, and surrounded by trees. Robbie stepped out onto the dusty path through the thick forest to get some sun. Hello. Suddenly, someone greeted the boy. Robbie turned and saw his neighbor, Donald Wilburn Collins, age 13. He was a big, wide-eyed, typical Texas schoolboy. Collins, scratching his belly and looking around, asked Robbie, Are you going for a walk? I am going home. I was at a friend's place. Come on, I want to show you something. The boy's mother warned Robbie to stay away from Collins, but he approached the curious neighbor. The boy had a bad reputation in the neighborhood in the yard and was disliked by many parents. However, Robbie did not take his mother's advice and approached the 13-year-old Collins. Before he could understand what his neighbor wanted, Robbie felt a wild shock and found himself face down on the ground. Collins pulled down Robbie's trousers, hurting the boy. It happened so quickly, abruptly and unexpectedly that all Robbie could do after the incident was slowly put his trousers back on and stare at his abusive neighbor with indignation. I raped you, Collins said with feigned bravado. If you tell anyone, I will hunt you down again and burn you to death. Do you understand? Robbie nodded frightenedly at the 13-year-old psychopath. I'm out of here. Robbie hurried home and tried to forget this horrible event forever. He succeeded. Despite his young age, Robbie had managed to hide the truth from his family and friends. His birthday was still two weeks away. So why spoil his long-cherished birthday? One hot day in June 28, 1998, Robbie woke up and looked unusually happy. After spending all his savings, the boy rushed off to buy himself some fireworks. The boy's mother took the tent she had given him and set it up in the backyard. Robbie had planned to invite his friends over and wanted to spend an evening with them in an outdoor tent. The boy told the shop that he would sit and walk with a friend in the woods behind the house. The mother confirmed that it was indeed a happy day for her son. Robbie, eight, was happily walking to his friends in the park when he heard quiet footsteps behind him. Halfway there, he was suddenly yanked roughly on the arm. Robbie turned around and saw Collins, his neighbor. A distraught neighbor doused Robbie's face with a flammable mixture. Robbie's eyes seemed to burn from the inside out, and he fell to the ground, wiping his eyes watering with pain. The boy screamed, waving his arms, but all he got in return was a few blows to the head. Robbie couldn't stand up straight or even open his eyes. He could only feel himself being dragged and pressed against the tree. As soon as Robbie felt himself being tied up, he realized that his neighbor wasn't acting alone. It seemed that Uncle Rex was with him. He heard the older man's voice, his laughter. The boy was tied with a rope to a tree trunk, doused with patrol and set on fire. Robbie was on fire, screaming frantically, 
trying to protect himself from the flames that were eating his skin. When the ropes burned, the boy fell down and rushed to escape. His head and body were burning. He did not know where to run and ran on instinct. He ran like a ball of fire for many minutes and collapsed on the side of the road in front of his house. His mother looked at him. He could barely breathe through large blisters all over his face. Robbie was rushed to hospital. Robbie was struggling to regain consciousness. Doctors said the chances of saving his life were minimal. The boy had third-degree burns on 99% of his small body. Only his legs survived. The rest was covered with severe blisters and scars. Despite the pain little Robbie endured, he was able to testify and name the perpetrators. Robbie's roommate, 13-year-old Donald Collins, was arrested about a week after the attack, but prosecutors in 2000 decided to drop the case until Robbie was well enough to testify. Collins was released after spending six months in juvenile detention. The boy was picked up by his uncle, and the case was never continued. Frank Bass, who handled the case at the time, died in 2006. Robbie was tried literally piecemeal to rebuild. Day after day, the boy was in terrible pain and had to undergo numerous operations, but no justice could be done. The brutal Collins was never arrested due to lack of evidence and motive. Robbie decided not to think about it. He just wanted to put all the evil that had happened to him behind him. Robbie spent most of his life at Shriners Barn Hospital in Galveston. To the surprise of the doctors, the boy was still alive and had a small victory over the excruciating pain. His mother watched cartoons with him. Friends visited him and family entertained him. As the years passed, Robbie grew older, but the pain did not go away. He asked his mother again and again about God and worried that he was going to hell. Colin was frightened by these conversations and tried to convince him that people like him were not going to hell, but the boy kept telling him otherwise. More than 12 years had passed since that tragedy, and in that time, Robbie had undergone more than 200 operations. It seemed like a miracle, but although outwardly he seemed to have conquered the disease, internally all his organs were seriously damaged, and he became ill with cancer. Two months before his 21st birthday, he was diagnosed with squamous cell skin cancer that had seeped into his abdomen. Life was painfully leaving the young man, and just 17 days before his death, Robbie made a 27-minute recording in which he again accused Collins of setting him on fire. Only this time, he decided to admit that Collins had abused him in the same woods two weeks before the tragedy. This shocked the boy's relatives, and the police finally understood the motive behind his actions. There was no money or help for Robbie's grieving family, but there is one more thing. Collins has been arrested. According to prosecutors, Robbie's murder occurred in 2011 and Collins' age already allows him to be tried severely. Several witnesses also testify that Donald Collins bragged in his yard that he set fire to Robbie to intimidate local children. On 9 February 2015, a jury found Donald Collins guilty of Robbie's murder and sentenced him to 40 years in prison. Collins himself denies guilt. Collins' lawyers promised to appeal against the verdict, but the appeal was rejected on 29 March 2017. The rehabilitation was painful, but his mother says Robbie never gave in to self-pity and anger. Don Greg's on my, my back and turned me around and do the grass in my face. Okay, and I want to say this again. So what you said was, Don grabbed you, turned you around, and threw gas in your face? Is that right? Yes. Days before he died, Robbie gave this deposition, naming Don Collins as the man who burned him and sexually assaulted him. Collins was never...